Good morning and happy Friday. You know, as I reflect on the days after Holy Week, those days that um, if we had lived back then, we might be hanging on those final words of Jesus, wondering what do we do, what do we do with that now? What do we do with all of those lessons that we were taught as followers of Christ now that he is gone? And I, I think of one of my, the most powerful images of that um, Last Supper is when Jesus explained to them the simple words, love each other. As I have loved you, now go out into the world and love people the same. Um, simple, but, but not. So as I hang on that part of um, the, the memories of last week, I started reading this little tiny book called Balcony People. I've actually had it for a while. I don't know why I never read it, um, but I pulled it out. And um, again, it's simple. It's a simple message, but one that is, is, is hard to, to continue to put into action. But one of the things it talks about is it gives you this example of this glass um, globe type thing. And it says to imagine, it's like a little over half of being your unconscious mind. And then that, that top half, the smaller of the two sections is your conscience and where we hold um, the way people treat us. And that a lot of things are kept in the subconscious or the unconscious mind that pop up every now and then when we least expect it. And then in our conscious mind is, is more. But the other part that's really um, interesting is it talks about basement people and then balcony people. And I was intrigued by that. So a basement person is someone who um, really says negative things to you. That person says negative things to you or maybe nothing at all. Maybe they don't say anything positive or negative. They just exist within your life. And, and so those thoughts and, and concepts and interactions take up that, that um, unconscious part. But yet again, they come up when we least expect them, which pulls us into our negative states. But then it talks about the balcony people, those people that are up there just cheering you on no matter what. It even gives this analogy, which I love. They're almost leaning over the sides of the balcony to tell you, way to go and, and great job. And then it encourages us to literally name those basement people in our lives, writing them down if we need to. And then make peace with that. And then it, and it encourages us to, to write down the names or acknowledge those people that are our balcony people. Those people that cheer us on. Those people that tell us good things about ourselves. Those things that we um, need to hear more of. Now, we don't have to have a lot of balcony people as long as the ones we have um, keep it up. But then I thought of something else. Like that wasn't enough to get be a deep thought. Then I started thinking about how do we receive those people? Do we still hang around our basement people just letting ourselves be talked to in those ways? Do we allow those people to stay in our lives? And then what about the balcony people? Do we thank them? Do we tell them what a role they play in our lives? And here's something else. Do we make it easy for them? Do we make it easy for them to compliment us? I mean, how many times um, do we get a compliment on our outfit or our hair or something that we've done? And the first thing we do is go, yeah, but, oh, this old thing, I've had it for years. Or... Um, boy, you really did that well. Really, I kind of thought I messed this one part up. Do we do that? And in doing that, do we make it harder for those balcony people to continue to cheer us on when we don't accept the cheering? 
the, the image I had in my mind is, are people going to still risk leaning over the sides of that balcony to compliment and cheer me on if I just wave them away like they're an embarrassment that they're there because I can't take their love or their positivity that I don't know how to? So I think there's two sides to this. One, what role do we play in people's lives? Am I a basement person to somebody or am I their balcony person? Maybe I'm different for different people. But at that same time, as I'm looking through that same lens, what kind of receiver am I to my basement and balcony people? Do I... Um, accept what these basement people tell me and go, you know what? I think you're right. You're right. But yet don't accept what my balcony people tell me. And if that's true, why? Why can't we accept all the good, all the love, all of the positivity? Don't we deserve that way, way more than we do what sometimes we think is the truth, which are the bad things? And wouldn't Jesus be so disappointed? One, if we can't love the way he's asked us to love, but also in that, isn't Jesus asking us to allow ourselves to be loved the way we want someone else to allow us to love them? Did that make sense? It does in my head. I'm going to say that one more time. Do we allow ourselves to be loved the way we want other people to love them. Goodness sakes, let's think about that today. Hmm. I hope so. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come to you on these days that follow Jesus' resurrection. We walk through these days remembering the words of Jesus. Now that Jesus is still alive and back, doesn't mean the words he said at the Last Supper are not so important to us. God, help us to be kind, not just to each other, but for my goodness, to ourselves. Help us be kind to ourselves. I think Jesus would want that too. God, we are grateful um, with the, the, the beautiful memories of all of the Holy Week services filed away in our head, the weather, the people, the messages. We are a blessed community of faith. Thank you. Amen. Okay. Have a great day.